Welcome to By The Numbers, I'm FM Tahiti and I hope you're doing well. In this episode, uh, we're going to play the Harland and Wolf welders, the Harland and Wolf uh, being the shipyard that built the Titanic uh, and other massive ships, but that's the one they're kind of most famous for, and it's the football team that's kind of associated with the shipyards, so we're going to have a go uh, against them. A few things to catch you up on, so schedule-wise... The last game we played on camera was the 4-3 win against Dollingstown, I think, which was nice. It was a, an interesting win, but it was a win. We then lost against Balin Mallard United uh, 2-0 in the Bet McLean Cup. There was no contest, really. They were much better than us. We then destroyed uh, Strabane Athletic 3-0 in the Steel and Sons Cup. Um, we got back into the league and beat Port Stewart 1-0, the Lee Bonis um, goal. Not bad. Um, we had an amazing match against Linfield in the County Antrim Shield first round, where we beat them on penalties in the end. But we really should have gone through in full time because we were all over them. So you can see a hat-trick from Dempster, more about him in a second. Um, and Carl Scott, our kind of backup striker. And they were losing until this 90 plus 1 uh, goal. But all through the match, we were just much better than them. Uh, and then we took all the penalties and won. But in the quarter-final, we then lost 1-0 to Cliftonville. And again, 90 plus 1. So a little bit gutting. And we were equal to them. There was no issues there when we were actually playing... This bigger side of Cliftonville, I think, their championship or prem- premiership. Bottom of the premiership by the looks of it, but still still premiership. Yeah, they'll do very well. With one of their few wins. And now we've got Harlan and Wolf. But there's a few personnel changes forced upon us, um, not by choice, that I'm really irritated about. Really, really irritated about. So if you go to the transfers, transfer history. So there's been some thieving going on. Coag stole Chris Gorman. Not bothered about that. Connor Donnelly went to Donegal Celtic, which we've already kind of covered, I think, which I was bothered about. Uh, cause again, he's defected. Uh, we tried to break his break his legs when Donegal played against us. Then Trevor Finley went, which, you know, he's a good cover across all, all the back, really. But no big loss. And then Curtis Dempster's gone to Limavady United who in the championships. They won the title in this division last season and went up. Um, and he's gone to them. I can't really blame him in the sense that it's a step up for him. Um, and although it looks like he only got one goal for us there, he'd actually scored nine. Eight in the cup, one in the league. So he was on fire in that sense. They signed him up. We couldn't stop them, really. We couldn't really compete with what they were offering. Um, so he went. So that was sad. Um, but understandable. But this is the worst one. Raymond Cockroft, our best player from um, our youth intake last year that we offered a really good kind of player pathway progression for. So you could do this, you could do that. You know, next season you'll be a squad player. The season after that you'll be a star, that kind of stuff. And he's gone to be a fringe player at Dollingstown. And we'd offered him like £40 a week, which is twice what he's asking, plus this big kind of bonus. And he's just gone to them. That's really irritating. Like, we can't even keep Dollingstown. It's like 12k. We we can't even keep them off our best player. So we really need to get out of this division if we want to try and keep hold of some of our own youth intake. So losing Curtis and losing Cockroft has definitely weakened us. I don't know if I'm going to be bringing anyone in. Because I don't know if there's anyone we can bring in. But we'll try this Harlan Wolf match. Without the two of them, you can see there's some gaps uh, already in there. Which, which strike are we going to bring? So Bonis is already there. Where Scott? Scott can go on. Got Hughes on the bench. Not really got anyone in midfield. We do kind of need to bring someone in. We've got Allen and Downey. Yeah, we are really lacking midfield there. To bring in Robinson's not ready. McGuckin's anyone who's kind of midfield-ish. Unless we go to the reserves, not in there. Graham McGreevy. He's nothing special. 
I'm playing down, he's already there. Right, McGreevy, we will bring up. But let play for the under 90, under 90s, uh, under 19s, under 18s. Even I was wrong, even then. Right, let's bring McGuckin off and put in McGreevy. Oh, McGreevy's already there. What, what am I doing? There, there we go. I just play this one match. It's been a few days since I played any real FM. I've been trying to get the graphics done for the Tahiti save. I'm desperate to play the Tahiti save. Got a few more tests to do on the database, but it's mainly the graphics stopping me now. I want to at least get the badge and 2D kits up and ready. The 3D kits might have to wait because of the issue with the templates changing from 19 to 20. But I just want to get the badges done. It's just taking me a little bit longer because I've not really had a chance to sit down and do it properly. But hopefully by the time this video is out, I'll have started the Tahiti stuff. I kind of want to start it before Christmas. Well, not scored just yet. Could do now though. On, get it out. There we go, Ray. No doubt from Ray. Smack you down the park. Yeah, I haven't actually played that much FM. I've been reading stuff. Uh, so Tommy Boy's on FM has got a really good blog about calculating the cost of actual development. So when you sell a player and get your money in, how much of that's actual profit? So this is including how much you're paying in wages for kind of staff development and things like that, or the wages of the player themselves whilst they're being with you. So that's quite a good one. Oh, Bonus, there we go. I don't know if Scott's got the kind of cutting edge we need. We might, oh, look at that. I think we might either need a target man so we can move Bonus over. Or I might check Scott at half time and see actually if he might be a better target man than he is pressing forward. Should really check that at the start of the game. Been all right with the new patch as well. Oh, good defense there. I'm really loving the Northern Ireland save. I have to keep stopping so I don't get too many episodes ahead. Um, I might do it over Christmas where I play like a a bunch of them, so I've got stuff to go up kind of over and around Christmas, so then I can take a bit of time with the family. But it's been a case of me having to kind of stop. So I don't get too far ahead, because I know it can get a bit difficult to follow when you've got lots of episodes to go through. Which is why I've kind of been chunking it by season. Which I didn't do for the TET save last last year. Or oh, Downey. Look at that. Don't need Cockroft. Just got Downey. You can do that. Downey is one of the ones with the stupidly good free kick taking. I mean, that's poor keeping, because McCready could have got that. But we, we'll take the goal. Free kicks 15, yeah. Set piece specialist we got there. Which is good because we've not really produced much. We have one shot on target, which is that free kick. Uh, let's have a look at what's going on. Let's do the team talk. Room for improvement. Sonny motivated one of them, fine. Right, so Scott. Good to me there. Mm. Yeah, he's much better pressing forward than he is a target man. There's always Hughes who can bring on the target man role. So I think that might be what we do. Keep Scott on and then Hughes comes on as a sub where we move Bonis cross, I think. We are a bit limited now up front. We do have some youth prospects, I think, but from looking at them last season, none of them were particularly amazing. I think Downs was the best one or something like that. I can't remember his name. Um, it's the one we just looked at. He's already gone off to Coag United, so I think our best option of a bad bunch is already gone. So Alan's got his card. 
Let's make some subs then. Let's get McGreevy on for Alan. Hughes on for Scott. And let's swap these two around. And then we can bring Gordon on in a little bit on the left. Got a couple more shots now, but we're still being kind of match stats wise, we're being dominated. We're not seeing anything else particularly good from Harlan and Wolf, but yeah, time to make the sub on the left. Apparently they're all uninterested. Un uninterested to that. Means they're gonna score now, isn't it? Ah, close. <laughs> close. Tommy Ray's doing alright. Not really missed um is it Connolly? He got perched from right back. Ray's actually stepped up quite nicely there. Come on. Keep hold of it or score. One of the two. Or oh, Hughes. To nobody. Don't know what that was. Ray's gonna go long. Go on. No, it's not. One of you should there. Oh, come on. Oh, look at that. McGreevy making up for his mistake by just diving in from behind with two feet. That's how you redeem yourself in this team. Commit a crime. There we go, 1 0. Sneaking a win. I don't think it's particularly deserved, but likewise, I don't think they deserve much out of it either. But that puts us joint first with Donegal Celtic. Apparently, it's an unexpected win that we had there. Um, and also, this is good news for our keeper. So, if we look at the shots from Welders. No, uh, no. I thought a lot more were actually kind of saved, but a lot of them were actually off target. I was going to say his kind of expected goals against might be quite good because of this. I'm guessing that's 0.5 or something like that. But it, you know, it helps his overall kind of efficiency rating. But it means he's he's doing all right. So two clean sheets, five conceded. When we've conceded, we've conceded a lot. That four-three match that we had. Um, and then the cup as well, that 4-4 that we had. Uh, he's doing all right. So we've got a few more league games coming. We won't play the done given match, uh, but we'll probably come back for maybe Banbridge um, or Almar, somewhere around there, or maybe a little bit further on, depending on how we get on. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to focus on or look at in a bit more depth for you, let me know. Um, I also want to kind of float the idea of where do you want me to go with the team? So do you want me to stay with Belfast Celtic no matter what? Because I'm enjoying being with them, even though we keep getting stripped down to the bones uh, by bigger, better teams. But what if a club in the leagues above us came in for us? So there's, there's no one particularly in the, the championship that's catching my eye uh, in particular. Uh, but what if a premiership side came in? So we were linked in the media with a Linfield job, bizarrely. Uh, but what if like Port Down came in, or Coleraine, or Crusaders, Glen Torrance, someone like that? One of the, I think Lana, are they the one with the massive investment? I think they are the one with the massive investment by the look of that. Yeah, definitely Lana are the ones with the money. Um, yeah, so if there's a bigger team that came in for us, what do you think we should do? I would say I'd probably pause and leave it a few days so people have the opportunity to watch and comment. But just as a kind of thinking ahead, what would you like to happen with that? Uh, let me know in the comments or come find me on Twitter and tweet me. You can also listen to me on the Dictate the Game podcast or Dictate the Podcast, as we've taken to calling it, on anchor.fm um, and various other platforms like Spotify, iTunes or Apple iTunes, uh, Google Pods. Things like that, you can find me on there too. And I will see you in the next episode. Thanks very much.